back, back again just to show you how to uh, add items to the cart and use the shopping cart more efficiently. Um, basically, I've set the table up so you have the name of the movie the year it came out, main actor, who the distributor was, uh, rating, direct name, and so forth. That's a synopsis, cost, and so forth. Uh, in there, you've got the movie over there. You probably wouldn't have that if you had a real shop, but uh, I'll just put it in there. Um, but yeah, basically, you add it to the cart, and it adds it. So I'm going to the next page, you add this one, it adds it. And then at the bottom, the a view guard, so you click on that. And we'll go to the guard page, the guard page that we've made. Um, with each click, it adds one to the thing. I've already clicked it a few times and played around, so it's like that. There's also a remove button, obviously, that just removes it. So I'll click three and update. And um, and yeah, so I'll just go into the code and show you how to uh, set up this page, the um, storefront. So yeah, you make a new ASPX page, and we've showed you numerous times in the past. And then you set up a data list, and you go into it and you uh, edit templates. You connect it to a data source. Uh, the SQL data source or whichever one. Um, but yeah, basically you set it up. I haven't shown you how to make a database. I don't really want to talk about how to make a database. It, it's something that uh, other people have shown numerous times. But anyway, you go edit the uh, template and you add the labels. Sticker and then a button. These uh, labels edit data bindings and you basically data bind and it connects to that connection thing and uh, the connection string and you can bind whatever it is uh, format and so forth one thing just with this is uh, the cost you're going to want to put the format in currency for that one um, then of course add a button you just drag this on as you usually would uh, there is no data bindings on that, but double click on it, so we go to the code, and here we are. Okay, so the page load, it's all inherited from a normal page, uh, it's page load is, uh, has nothing in it. This uh, is probably the most important thing, at the bottom of the page there's a, a button to put you onto the view card, which I showed you. Besides that, the only button um, that's really relevant is this one in the thing. Uh, basically, okay, so this is creating a label. Um, this is actually declaring a label, and it's getting E, so from the data list, item, find control, and movie label ID. Now, what that is, is it's obviously. Uh, Movie label ID is um, sorry, it's easy to look. It's basically the ID of one of the items in the uh, template. So anyway, uh, to cut a long story short, it finds that. Um, it, yeah, it should be that one that I said you probably shouldn't have in there. So you'll need to find another way of displaying it. But um, sorry, I'll just. So the ID would be there, um, and here in the real uh, website. However, uh, sorry, I'm going off and double. Uh, but yeah, you would declare an int and pass that int because it's a string. You need to pass it. Um, you might want to do try pass if uh, it's a 
you're not sure if it's going to be an int, but of course you're sure with this case that it's going to be an int, so you just pass an int through that. Uh, yes, so the labels item text. And then this bit here is the interesting bit. A general shopping cart instance add item. So this is a static class, obviously. Oh, if you go shift F12, you get the directory. So um, basically, um, static. So you don't really need to declare an object of the shopping cart. You can just refer to it and then refer to its instance, as we are doing here, and then just refer directly to the add item bit, the method, and use an integer, the integer we just did here, to pass it in. And basically, yeah, from here, it runs the thing, uh, the object, uh, the method to add the item. So, shopping item, which is new item, new shopping on. So this is uh, the constructor which takes in the ID of the shopping item and creates a new item. Then from there, if the item contains new item, items contains new item. So in other words, it's checking if this list object of shopping items already has one of these. For each uh, shopping item in items, if it is that one, so when it finds the actual same object. Item quantity plus plus and then return. So it breaks out of this loop and breaks out of this entire method. Um, but it doesn't really return anything obviously because it's void. Um, otherwise we get down here where it doesn't have anything. Uh, so yeah basically it just adds an item to the new items which we've built here. But yeah, so that's uh, basically how that works. Um, yeah, uh, the next thing I'd like to show you is actually some validation. Because I think it's uh, just something that might be useful. Um, okay, so we'll go to create uh, validation entries. Okay. So what I've done is I've actually made an entire uh, static class. You see. Yeah. In this, uh, I declared a class called dvd shop admin dot upload, and that's more or less just to uh, keep all the code in one place. But I've put in uh, the create and the get uh, methods here. To the source of the database, so you, it has the next and string command, and the thing that's passed in is the actual ID of the star, the star, so it would be Harrison Ford in Indiana Jones's case. Then, of course, it runs the thing and it returns a number, perhaps a number um, from the execute scale up. And then the string is um, i two string, and then return s. So, so, so where this is used is, um, yeah, basically returning a. Yeah, so basically it's returning the star name in a nutshell. Um, create star, that's just adding one into a table of stars and so forth. But um, I really didn't tell you anything about the database because it's actually quite relevant. It's more of a shopping cart which we're talking about here. So anyway, but that's just worth mentioning. Um, okay, so now back to validation, what I was actually telling you about. Um, Okay, we have a method here, a static method, so of course no validation thing needs to be created. Um, I did this a while ago, if I was making something now, I might make an object where I uh, perhaps 
feeding all the information and then a different code for checking everything. Um, so if something in the right rejects or something, uh, rejects, which is a uh, form, the right text and so forth. But anyway, this is a nice little method anyway, is checking uh, basically that people are putting in the right information. So what this validation entry is, so we got the name, Kowalski um, synopsis. So list is error message. So the error message might be, uh, well, basically it'll be this. So it's a list object, which is much easier to use. And you add um, basically all these things if something is wrong. We're just checking the synopsis if it's an empty string. Um, uh, if the year is not a year, so this is try pass, which is what I was saying just before about if you're not sure if someone's putting in a year and integer a number, um, then this can return to bool, which is true or false, obviously. Um, so if it is not true, how do you produce it's not valid? The problem with this logic though is, of course, if someone said, yeah, I made this movie in the 1700s, it might be true, but it's very undoubtful, very doubtful. Uh, money uh, it uses a float in the same method tripass and uh, make sure that cost is up. So it does the same thing, money is not valid. Check move. Okay, check move. Now, this is just black. So if, um, if you move your ID, it needs to find the movie ID from where the thing is. So if X it goes through, it runs a thing, uh, execute non query. So it'll find, if it returns something, it'll be um, one, a number, or zero. So it's, you know, like a bull. If it's one, has movie equals true, else return has movie, so which is automatically set to bulk. So it's going to run this line of code nevertheless. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, so from here, you know whether or not it's a movie. Uh, validate picture, this is another interesting piece of code that perhaps you might want to use somewhere. Um, it starts off when we have the string of the pic, which I think from memory is. Right, here we are. Okay, so we have a string cover file. So we have get file extension. So um, FLU cover would be a um, file upload. Initially, you have to check if it has a file. So if it has a file, you go on and you check file cover dot file name. Um, so it's the actual last bit. So the image name dot x. Uh, JVG or whatever, um, and then validate picture. So it does this method that we're about to talk about. I've just made a quick array of uh, the different types of file types. This is an extensive. There's probably 20 or so types of files. Um, there might be a much better way of doing this, but however, um, we start off with the bool is pick. So is it a picture? Initialize it's false. For each ty, it's just because I've bashed the keyboard and don't really make up any real variables in file type. Um, so for each one of these, it's going to run through once for a loop. If pick, so in other words, a string equals ty, fix equals true. Okay. So it all would have passed in dot. Uh, PNG or something, uh, JPEG or so forth. So error message equals this is um, a conditional, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but I think it's called the conditional allocator or something. Um, if this is true. No, 
right, sorry, I'm not going right. Okay, so if this, this is a condition, so if this boolean is not equal to false, or if it's true, should say, um, then this is the case, it's true, so it goes on this side of this semicolon. This is true, this is false. So the string is empty. So it'll return an empty string. Cavalier must be that or such and such if it isn't. So back to where we were. Um, this will either be string empty or it'll have something. So if it does have or something, is valid will be false. Um, and then from there, uh, it'll add also into the text a break point, a uh, break line, which means it'll have a break under it. Um, basically, this will also get another errors, the list errors we were talking about before, and then add a break line to them. Um, but it will go through for each um, string in the list, so it will go through and then add the error and then add that. And it's all coming um, into the label, and then from there, basically, if it is valid and the page is valid. Now, why have I done that? Well, basically, if you have a page and you're using the standard uh, validation tools, it could be the case that someone is smart enough to turn off all the validation and people do whatever they want and put in whatever information they like and then you're not validated. So this um, code which I've shown you here, that's just basically to make sure that there's some back-end validation um, which works and um, basically you know that what's being put in is being uh, validated 100% uh, so in other words if all these errors that I've been showing you you might want to do them in the tools as well the JavaScript based tools but anyway kind of moving on uh, this is for if uh, the actual file upload so the in our case the cover of the movie has a file if it doesn't we'll just skip over this obviously but basically save as and then server uh, map path and then uh, di uh, images so it's here um, and then plus movie cover so basically that's going to save it as the movie name dot uh, get extension and then that to string. Um, you probably don't need that last bit, but anyhow. Um, and then from here, uh, create DVD. So, basically, um, it knows at this point that everything's valid, so it can just put everything in without any uh, worry of is it going to work and so forth. Connection string, uh, I think insert into movie, and then the table names, and then values with the adds atom, and then, uh, and then from there, parameters add with, and then these movie name, movie name, and then that is from there, and then obviously open, execute query, and then close. Okay. Um, I'll just give it a quick look over and check if there's anything else I want to show. But I think basically I've shown enough of that. I'll just do one more thing and um, yeah, I'll move on to how you send in the order. Yeah, thanks for watching.